If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. The question asks us for the rate at which thermal energy is being generated in this loop. And of course, that is a long way of asking for the power in the loop. And we know that power has a few different equations, one of them being the voltage squared divided by the resistance. Now, the source of the voltage is actually what is known as an induced EMF. The symbol for induced EMF is this Greek letter right here. So we actually want to rewrite the power equation and replace V with the EMF symbol. Now, according to Faraday's law, the EMF is going to equal the rate of change in the magnetic flux with respect to time. Furthermore, we know that magnetic flux, as long as the field is perpendicular to the plane of the loop, is equal to the product of the magnetic field and the area. What we're going to do with this blue equation right here is take the derivative with respect to time. When we do that, we have to keep in mind that the area of the loop is a constant. So before taking the derivative, it's actually useful to put the constant in the front of the expression. So we'll rewrite it as a times b. And now we'll go ahead and take the derivative of the magnetic flux with respect to time. Again, since area is a constant, we're just going to retain that constant and then multiply it by the derivative of the magnetic field with respect to time. Now, the question actually notes that this magnetic field is increasing at the constant rate of 10 millitesla per second. So that 10 millitesla per second is this value that we have denoted dB dt. What we want to do next is come up with an expression for the area of this circular loop. Now to do that, we first note that circumference of a circular loop is equal to 2 pi times its radius. And the reason that we bring up circumference is because the question actually gives us the length of the copper wire. So if you can imagine a straight piece of copper wire that is then bent into a circle, we could see that the length of that copper wire, which we can call L, would actually turn out to be the circumference. So in fact, we can replace the letter C in this equation for circumference with L. They're the same thing. What we're going to do is solve this equation for the radius. So we'll divide by 2 pi. We can see that the radius is equal to the length of the copper wire divided by 2 pi. Now the reason we want to do that is because we're trying to come up with an expression for area. Well, area, of course, is pi r squared. So we would have pi multiplied by the radius, which we just discovered was L over 2 pi squared. So this is the expression for the area of the loop. And if we wish, we can actually simplify it a little bit by squaring the L to make L squared and squaring the 2 pi to make 4 pi squared. And then actually a factor of pi in the numerator will cancel with a factor of pi in the denominator. So we'll take this expression for the area and we'll substitute it into our rate of change in the magnetic flux equation. So we're going to put this bracketed green expression in for the area right here. So right here we have the final expression for the rate of change in magnetic flux with respect to time. Remember, according to Faraday's law, that is equivalent to the EMF. So we're going to take this expression, which is the EMF, the induced EMF more technically, and we're going to substitute it in for epsilon over here. Now, as for the resistance, we recall from an earlier chapter that the resistance of this copper wire will equal its resistivity times its length divided by its area. Now be careful, for the area in this equation, we are not talking about the area of the entire circular loop. We're talking about the cross-sectional area of the wire itself. Now the wire is presumably a very thin cylinder, and so when it comes time to put in the expression for the area, we're talking about this cross-sectional area, which is going to be pi times the radius of that cross-sectional circle squared. We can actually rewrite the radius as being half of the diameter, so d divided by 2 squared, and then we can square that out, so we're going to end up with pi times d squared over 4. That's going to be the expression that we fill in for the area right here. And then actually algebraically this 4 for convenience can come up to the numerator. So this is the expression for the resistance. We're going to plug that into our power equation. Now this wacky expression could be algebraically simplified further, but it might be easier just to go ahead and plug in the known values. We have the length of the copper wire given in centimeters, so we're going to have to change that into meters, so that will be 0.5 meters. We have the rate of change in the magnetic field with respect to time, which is given in millitesla per second, 
So we're going to have to multiply that by 10 to the minus 3 to get it into Tesla per second. Pi, of course, is a constant. The resistivity is a constant, and that is given to us by actually referring to a table in the textbook. There should be a table of resistivity values somewhere in your textbook for copper. The resistivity turns out to be 1.69 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. Again, that is a value that you would have to look up in your textbook, or it might be given to you in your problem if you're doing this on a computer homework system. So that'll be the resistivity. The length was already mentioned, and then the diameter of the wire was given in millimeters, so we just have to make sure we multiply that by 10 to the minus 3 to convert it into meters. So with all those conversions and constants, let's go ahead and plug in. So after you carefully plug this in, you should get roughly 3.68 times 10 to the minus 6. And then since we're calculating power, the standard unit is going to be in watts. Or you could also use joules per second. So this is the correct answer. As a little calculator tip, you might want to work this out separately. I punched this all the way into my calculator in one fell swoop, but that might be challenging. So you might want to first work this out on your calculator and write down the value and then maybe work this out and write down its value and then divide the two. But the answer nevertheless will be in, circled in red here, 3.68 times 10 to the minus 6 watts.